Okay guys, welcome to the body shop. I am going to be painting car today. So, just got done wet sanding 600. Uh, did high build primer. Uh, you guys already sort of told me to hit it with 600. Um, that's kind of like what I use for a sealer. So I'm just letting this dry up and then I'm going to go through and use uh, some pre-painting prep which I got over there. And we're going to clean the entire car with that, get it all nice and true and straight. And might have to hit wet sand one more time. Uh, I'm not entirely sure. So uh, looking pretty good. Very happy with everything. So I am uh, here at the paint, paint shop. Got my compressor going right now. Got another compressor. So we got a 27 gallon or 26 gallon. I think it's 26 and a 30 gallon. So we're at basically almost 60 gallons. So should have enough CFM power to do everything. Uh, we're gonna be putting in a fan over here for the inlet and then another box fan out here, to push some of it out. So should have plenty of room to paint the car in here. This is a rather big garage. Let me get out of here though really quick. You see that thing's pretty quiet, even inside the garage. So, uh, Heather's grandpa's gonna be helping me out, my fiance. So, he used to paint cars way back when. Uh, so, he's gonna kind of, kind of guide me through the process and help me get it going. So, I'm gonna let this drive for another 10 minutes or so. And then after that, I will be uh, getting it all taped up. Should go pretty quick, hopefully taping it all up. And uh, then we should be getting it taped up, cleaned up. Unfortunately, the car's not starting, so we're gonna have to push it in to the garage. So I'm getting the tires aired up, uh, and then we'll go from there. So, one thing I did forget was a clear coat. So I'm actually gonna be using a, I call the local Napa here, paint supply, and they had some PPG paint uh, clear coat. So we're gonna use that on top of the Eastwood base coat, uh, made for urethane and everything. So we're hoping that turns out pretty decent. I know uh, it's not really recommended, you know, mixed brands because most brands are formulated to work with themselves and little additives or whatever is needed so uh just is what it is so there she is looking really nice oh i got this door to close too the body lines are really good gap really good just like the other door it needs the whole thing needs to go in as you can see that way so and then i still need to remove there was something I had to remove, I don't remember. Oh, it was these trim pieces here, they're chrome. So I'm gonna have to figure out how to get those off real quick. I don't really care to have them, but uh, I didn't realize that there's actually potentially paint underneath. Sorry about the camera anyway, so I'm gonna have to figure that out. I might just paint them red, leave them on. I haven't decided. I'd rather rip them off. <laughs> so uh using his shop, so I just gotta find a screwdriver and hopefully I can you know, get it going from there and get those guys off and uh, we'll just paint over that and while that's going on I'm gonna start taping up the car the rear window I know we need to get taped off um, I'm gonna tape off all of the rear tail lights bumper brackets honestly if we get a little over spray in there I'm not worried about it though at all same behind the rear valence and everything I'll just you know if we get over spray and that stuff I'm really not worried even the interior not worried if you really get any overspray in there. I'm going to take out my new grill and a couple other pieces. Uh, windows, we're going to roll those up and then I'm just going to reach in, you know, mark those off and uh, from the inside with some tape. All good. This is the door lock that I just could not get off uh, with that sound dead there. Uh, yeah, thanks. Should go rather quick. We're going to wrap all the wheels once we get it in with trash bags and I'm going to run a line of. Uh, tape and stuff underneath and then I'm also going to put down a plastic tarp underneath the car uh, that's one, one thing they said to do and then we're going to wet the floor and then we got a couple of heaters I got like a space heater that's electric and then we have a couple gas powered ones but we probably won't use the gas powered ones uh, just given everything we got going on with the fumes and everything we don't really want to risk it and it's actually nearing almost 70 today so kind of a freak warm day where we should be set perfect to paint and then they said uh when i called the paint crew today they said throw your base on throw your clear on let's sit overnight about 12 hours and you should be good to you know remove it and so very very happy with that okay guys we got it all taped up 
They thought I was joking. It's been pretty good. It took probably about two hours. What do you think, two hours? Probably. Yeah. So, we're pretty happy. I'll keep you guys updated. The front balance is definitely the hardest part. So we're gonna get uh, get the garage closed, get the airflow starting going here, hit everything one more time with the free prep, and then start setting up the gun. So it should be uh, moving pretty quickly now. And probably take a lunch break in there too. All right guys, so car's taped off, we are ready. We got two compressors, one there, one there. I just got, we're just gonna use one hose because mine's got a whole bunch of crap all over it from dragging it out in the driveway and then I got some dirt all over it and everything. It's like new, so it's oily, so it just has everything on it. Got my Harbor Freight dryer, so I got this on a quick disconnect. And that way I can throw it in between each of the compressors. Uh, before the hose, 50 feet of hose, so we're probably gonna be running pretty high PSI. We're thinking 60 to 70. And that way when it gets to the gun, we can easily maintain 30. Uh, then we also have another dryer for the gun itself. Um, using the Eastwood Concourse 2. So pretty good gun from what I've heard with the 1.3 tip. We got the base coat and uh, over here, uh, mixing cups as you can see. Got the car all ready to go. We got the hood inserts here. I still need to sand those at 600. We got some uh, the respirators there. This is kind of like a another little table. We got some pre painting prep and everything so we can put the car before we get going. Um, yeah, so we're going to be doing some exhaust intake over there in that window because it's higher. Exhaust out over here. This has a um, 20 by 20 furnace filter uh, on the back side of it. And then we just take all this off. You can still see we're getting some airflow in here. The wind is kind of blowing this way through the building. So should be good. Um, yeah, I think that's, really think that's everything. So yeah, car's looking pretty dang good. It took us a little over two hours to get it all taped up. For me and Heather, it was our first time. So, uh, pretty happy with that. Uh, bringing it into like actual light and actual garage, you definitely see a lot of little imperfections that, uh, unfortunately I'm just gonna have to live with. It just is what it is. So, um, I would really, realistically, I would need like another month or two to really, really get this car working on here every day to get it really straight and smooth but for a driver quality car i think it's going to be pretty dang good so that's the update whenever we get mixed in and everything like that we'll get the gun dialed in um, and we'll go from there okay guys we are ready to get the paint going so here we are we got the paint right here if you are a keen observer, you probably just have seen the color, but I'm not going to tell you. Uh, anyway, so reading this guy, you're going to go four to one with the activator. It does say in some of your conditions you can use a reducer. When I talked to the guys, given the temperature, I think they actually didn't give me a reducer. So uh, I'm not going to have one. Hopefully we don't need one. So what I did was I just went ahead with the Sharpie, marked my four and one locations. That way it'll be a little bit easier for me just to see. Uh, and I'm going to strain the paint going into my mixing cup and then I'm going to strain it going into the actual gun as well. Uh, I just bought these Harbor Freight uh, paint strainers and then yeah so once we get it in here this is just a little stand but we couldn't find anywhere with all the attachments we added so I just threw it in the vise so we can actually hold the gun in there. So then basically what I'll do is I'll just move the strainer over Actually, I'll probably just grab a new one because I have like 100 of them. And then we'll strain it again, add the mixing cup into the gun itself. Uh, for the gun itself, I bought like two of these things. These little like, uh, you know, plastic cup. Uh, one for the base coat and one for the clear coat. Uh, for the gun, I'm going to set this probably about like 30 to 32 PSI. I think it's about going to be the magic number just because we are going from 60 PSI-ish. Uh, all the way to here we have 50 feet of hose so i'm gonna go a little higher than what's recommended at 30 uh just a couple pounds and hopefully that will be good to go so uh, yeah let's get to it i'm gonna open up the paint i'm gonna mix it with just a stir stick for a couple minutes throw it on in uh try check it out get the activator in stir it all up 
and then we will uh, test out the paint. Uh, we're going to test it out just on this big box that we have laying around for moving. So we can throw a little bit on there if we get the gun kind of in uh, in some sort of operating shape to where we are good to go. And uh, then we should be ready at that point then actually throw some paint on the car. So you can feel a ton of stuff down at the bottom there. So we're definitely going to have to stir this pretty good. But man, that is a nice looking color. Especially when you get the clear coat and get the undertones coming out. I think it's going to look really, really good. Yeah. You ready, babe? All right, we're gonna let you spray some. So I'm sure you saw kind of. Now nah, you got it. Oh, you're way, way too far. You're gonna be about six to eight inches. Yeah. You need to get a little bit closer. Yeah. There you go. All right, then hold on. You don't want this to drag on the car. So let me pull this out of the way and then you can put it like over your shoulder. Okay. Look. Yeah. Well, you can put it over the other way. All right, whatever, you got it. I'm gonna stand kind of right here to. All right, go for it. Yeah, it's fine. What? You're not doing anything wrong. You can get a little closer to the panel. Yeah, there you go. Just like that. That was the best one. All right, do the whole panel, too. There you go. Can you get up in the, or the gray on there, but you don't, hey, watch out, you're touching. You just touched, you just dragged. Yeah, you, got, you just gotta be careful, that's it. Just, No, yeah. I mean, how do I fix it? And we're gonna do another coat, it doesn't really matter. But, I'm not really, we're gonna do another coat. Well, just watch and make sure you don't get your clothes or anything in there. You got it. If you need to come over with salty and reach around, you can. Or you can just do this panel here if you want to keep doing this right here. Yeah, just do whatever you want. I'm gonna step out now for this stuff. Yeah, you can work your way to the fender now.
I'll leave that because it's already really wet. So you don't get any runs. Okay. So I have to start back up here now. And what I would start with is this windshield where it's gray and do that first. Might feel better if you go left or right on it. Maybe. Go on this side up? Yeah, so you on can get piece. so you can get up under oh that's already done. Yeah, so we just need to get all this covered now. However you want to do it. Starting where? Just all the gray is just got it covered, however you all want right. to do it. Alright guys, so here it is. Woo, she looks pretty dang good. We definitely got some stuff. As you can see, a lot, a lot of orange peel is still drying. It's only been about 10 minutes or so after the clear coat. Uh, I'm going to be honest, it's not the color I wanted uh, at all. It has way more purple and way more maroon uh, than what I originally thought this color was. So uh, I'm going to be honest, I mean, I'm not like loving the color yet i'm um, hoping once i get it out into the sun you know after it's dried and everything i'm going to love it um, still very happy with the results and i am very happy uh, with what it is and driving it and everything uh, i wanted something just more red just a personal preference but as you can see we had some uh you know a lot of the body work we did actually turned out pretty decent especially with the paint coming on it and everything so not too bad pretty happy overall definitely still have to live with kind of the crumpled metal there just didn't have time got to let everything keep drying so overall um you know i was looking for like a seven out of ten i think once we cut it and buff it and uh get some of the orange peel out i would say it's going to be a seven out of ten very good driving looking car so uh, yeah not too bad one of the things that did end up happening was i forgot uh clear coat so i ran over this napa auto paint supply stuff and this is what i got this evercoat edge from i think it's ppg or uh, no i don't remember anyway this is like pretty much all they had it was like 150 bucks and they said it would work with the eastwood clear, uh, paint so i went ahead and used it I did a uh, kind of light mist coat on one side and uh <clears throat> over here uh, kind of went a little bit heavier to start so we got two runs I think on the entire paint job it's uh, we got one right there which if I get the light right you might be able to see it and I think we had one I think it was over here um, a lot of it just needs to dry and cut and buff yeah here's the other one we can see the run so uh, that was the only two we really noticed uh, at a first glance some of the body work is just not great you know like we got some the surface there wasn't sanded down. Looks like I missed it there. So, other than that, it actually turned out pretty decent. So, it is, uh, I don't know how it is. If it's ready. Still a little tacky. Can't wait to get in there and really get the flake. Um, again, I just wanted something a little bit more red. So, I'm hoping once I get in the sun, it does pop a little bit more. But regardless, I'm still really happy with how it is. Uh, me and my fiance, soon to be wife, a couple weeks. She actually threw down a whole bunch of paint too, and so did her grandfather who kind of walked us through the steps. He kind of uh, gave it to us to run with it and kind of pointed us through and gave us some directions. Uh, yeah, so really overall not too bad. Uh, only issue I had is the color. It, this color should not be called uh, Molten Red Metallic. It's not red, <laughs> it's maroon. Uh, so why they would put red on that, I don't know. So definitely if you're looking for like a nice deep red, that is not the color. And our Concourse 2 gun, uh, I don't know what's going on with it. It was giving us nothing but issues uh, when we first started shooting. I mean, all we had was, I mean, drips everywhere. We couldn't shoot, uh, couldn't shoot any paint out of it without just drips everywhere. So her grandfather took a look at it and he, you know, tightened up everything in it, checked the gun and, you know, didn't quite work. 
at that point we switched over to a Harbor Freight gun from one of their neighbors and everything worked fine. So. Um, and this one ran a higher PSI, but this is just an older central pneumatic gravity feed spray gun and we had no issues at all. And we actually shot it with an unknown tip. So uh, we just put some paint in there and it worked. So yeah, but here it is. <laughs> all right, thanks guys. Yeah, right in here it looks really good. There's my truck and there's the car. So I think they gave me the molten red plum metallic, <laughs> not the molten red metallic. So see, it's a little bit darker than I would have liked, but it still looks pretty neat with all the metallic in there. If you get the sunlight, you can see all the metallics. So, not bad. <laughs> 